Hey class, it's uh, Professor Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte, and this is the uh, video for Lab Report uh, 3. And for the first question, uh, everything that I'm talking about, everything you need to do, you've already done if you've already reviewed the Tuesday video for this week. Okay, so this is kind of review, uh, but a little bit of like reflection is required. But if you've done the video, uh, I pretty much explain uh, what you need to know. I just need you to kind of think about it and write down your thoughts. Okay, so <clears throat> first bit of review is just to make a rectangle component and we're just going to make a parametric rectangle. And remember that X and Y <clears throat> take domains. They're not like the the like center box. You need a domain, which is kind of a starting number and an end number, right? So we do that, draw on a basic number slider, just go ahead and give it 1 to 10. And if you remember, <clears throat> we actually want to set one of these to negative, so I'm just going to say negative A. And you pretty much just copy this, copy paste, control C, control V. And let's take a look. So we have <clears throat> this, you know, parametric rectangle, real basic, okay? And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it. Remember the move transform? So we take some geometry, pipe it in, and remember you need to move it with a vector. So it takes and we want to make a tower, so I'm going to move it up in the Z, because it's the direction I want, so unit Z. And remember, Z takes magnitude, so move this up and down. And, you know, if I was going to do a tower, I'd probably want it to be pretty tall, so I could say 100. Okay. And then just like our column, we could do a loft. So I would take the first curve and the second curve and loft them. So plug this in, hold shift. Oops, not that. Hold shift and then plug in G and you get a loft. So that's parametric. You know, it could be like a beam or column <clears throat> or a tower. It's pretty nondescript right now. But that's the basic kind of scaffold for what we're going to investigate, which I'm going to call a tower right now, okay? So, you've got this basic kind of structure. Um, first thing I want you to try is, I'm going to disconnect this loft here. And <clears throat> instead of plugging in a slider, I want you to plug in a series component. You can already see something else happening here. And this is what I kind of wanted you to answer the question, is um, basically what's happening. Like, why is that effect different than when I plug in uh, just a number slider? Okay. And go ahead and finish off the number slider so you can plug in, you know, N is a step size. And I'll probably want to modify this. So maybe 20. And the same thing for C, only we're going to change this to whole numbers. Plug that in. And you can plug back. We've got all of our cross sections here. And we take G, plug it in here, and so we've got this back. <clears throat> so we've got a bit more parametric variation in our tower. Okay, so that's that's the effect that you should get. Next thing I want you to do for the second question is uh, basically take these number sliders out <clears throat> and replace them with uh, series components. Okay, so take this, basically plug it in here, and you're going to get a different uh, set of outputs basically. Okay. Um, you do want to make sure though that the S is is non-zero because that's going to cause you some problems. 
and then go ahead and these all need to be 20 right you want the same number and all of these so go ahead and share that delete this and then just copy paste the other series here And actually, you want this to be the same too. Just plug all, all those the same number, and you can see <clears throat> something happens. This is actually is because rectangle isn't previewed, so just turn that off. Okay. And uh, then you've definitely got some really funky stuff happening here. So examine that. Like, what do you what do you get? by um, having a series component in instead of uh, the number slider and then I, and then you know experiment with, with what kind of forms you get and how that's different and then the next thing I want you to do is replace the series components with range components and I'll leave that up to you you should know how those work by now if you follow the video so input range components there instead of series components so they'll plug into domain in the same way, and you'll need to probably share this number. And uh, then experiment with the forms that you get from that, okay? And explain to me the difference between number slider and these other components, and then range versus uh, series, okay? So refer to the question. And uh, you know, the idea of this is just to understand like how these kind of function in a design context and how they might reflect or support your design intent, okay? And um, the other thing you're going to do for the third part of the question is uh, something kind of like, hang on a second here, ah, like this, okay? So this is the form that I want you to create by adding a rotate component, and you'll basically get this kind of twisting effect if you're successful, okay? And the idea is, uh, again, to, if you follow the video, you should understand how to add a rotate component, and you'll have some idea of where it belongs in the script, okay? And you should be able to implement that. And uh, what I want you to do with that is to give me um, a screen capture of, and an explanation of how you did that. And uh, to do that, you can go up in Grasshopper. Uh, to um, <clears throat> you know, file uh, export high-res image, and that'll export um, a ping file, and you should be able to put that into your um, Adobe uh, Adobe Acrobat file. Okay. The next bit that I want to show you <clears throat> is this script called Lab Freeb, and I'm going to give this to you pretty much. And the um, parts you're going to mess with are these graph mappers here. And again, if you did the Tuesday video, you should understand how these work. Um, you can manipulate them by playing with the points. You can uh, right click on them and go to graph types. And you can basically uh, change it to different, different types. And um, you know, that's what I want you to play with. And I want you to answer questions. And again, um, what you're going to do for me is take a screen capture um, of what you see on the screen. Like you're going to take a capture of this, maybe with a um, screen capture tool in Windows or the screen capture control sequence, which is usually shift uh, print screen on PC. And you're going to put that alongside of a screen capture of your graph mapper components. And that's what you're going to submit for one of the questions from me. So that's kind of what I want is a is a composition that combines the output with the graph mapper uh, inputs. Okay, so I understand basically how you created the thing. Okay, and that should be pretty uh, self-explanatory if you read the questions. Okay, so that's all contained. Basically, you're just going to play with the script and answer some questions. Okay, you don't have to do too much there. <clears throat> and then the last thing is a graduates only uh, challenge, but uh, you're welcome to do it if you're an undergraduate. And this is actually going to start <coughs> with an ellipse component. And an ellipse has, you know, two radii. Which 
I'll just kind of mess with you. I'll plug this in. So you can basically get different kinds of ellipses, okay? And it also takes in uh, a base plane uh, as the input for the position. And um, <clears throat> that's actually the um, part that we're interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and move it. Take the ellipse. And actually I'm going to move the position in the uh, X. Okay. <clears throat> and just for... I'm going to go ahead and modify this. So you can move that. And again, I'm just changing the state of it. So I turn preview off. And now you kind of see what I get. So again, if I change this, it's going to propagate to move. And then that's the piece I have. And then the other piece I'm going to add to it is rotate. And I'm going to take this geometry and put it in for this and take this rotation plane. And the interesting thing is that the rotation plane defaults to x, y. And normally we do something like where we add an area component to it, right? And then uh, throw in radians and you know, we do something like this where we rotate it. But what we're going to do instead is uh, this, where I'm actually going to rotate it <clears throat> using the center point as its kind of center of rotation. Okay, and I'm going to do something kind of funky with this. I'm going to go ahead and put in a range component, and for the domain. They've got this circle of ellipses. Pretty cool. Okay, and then the last bit for this range, I'm actually going to put in a slider and make it really big. And, you know, I really just want whole numbers anyway. Check that out. And the last piece, <clears throat> I am going to take this rotation, and I'm going to take these, and I'm going to rotate them. But instead of the uh, rotation plane, I'm going to go ahead and do that area piece. So take these, take the area of them. Actually, I have zero here. Yeah, take the area, and plug it in for P. And then I need another rotation angle, so I'm going to go ahead and just copy like all this stuff and plug that in for A. And then I'll go ahead and hide, you know, preview off on these. Actually, what I need to do is. Um, these need to be the same number. So let's see here, 16, 16, 16, yeah. So you can really experiment with this, and what we've basically created here, if you think about it, 
is a spider graph. Right? I don't know if you played with these when you were a kid. I think it was 1080. Okay. So you can play with these sliders. To create, you know, different kinds of effects. So this is kind of a basic uh, spire graph script, and I've purposely left out the details about, you know, how it works and um, why I made the decision that I made of it because I want you guys to experiment with it and understand how it works and play with it a bit. So some of the things that you can can kind of play with uh, might be. You know, taking things that already have a number slider, like for instance, uh, this move, you know, bit here, and instead of having it just be number slider, right, play with adding a series or adding a range. You could also try adding series to the radii so that the radii uh, change. Um, so there's lots of different there's things you can do like that in the script that can add more variability and just generally understand a little bit better, like. Uh, how you can get um, the kinds of effects that you uh, like from it, the, th the things that you find interesting about it. Okay, so um, we'll leave this to you, the graduates, to to kind of to kind of play with, and uh, I want you to show me what modifications you've made to it. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, just tell me what you find interesting about it. Okay, and uh, I'll see you guys in class uh, tomorrow.